Now, Elizabeth Warren has decided she's going to stick up for the idea of Social Security actually being increased rather than decreased. Now, Washington Post was livid about this. They had an editorial board uh, op-ed saying that <laughs> these progressives and led by the Progressive Change Campaign Committee and then Senator Tom Harkin uh, and uh, Representative Sanchez in the House saying that, hey, you know what, all this nonsense conservative right-wing talk about cutting Social Security is a bad idea. What we need to do is increase Social Security because of how popular and important it is. And the Washington Post said, but wait a minute, that you'd be taking money from poor rich people, which I love, <laughs> poor rich people, right? And now, that wasn't a direct quote to be fair to them, but as I read you the quote, uh, the other day, it's about as close as it gets. They said, how much more can you take from the rich to give to the, to the elderly who have gotten so much already? They said that with a straight face. Well, Warren G is here to straighten that out. She's old school G, okay? Go. The call to cut Social Security has an uglier side to it, too. The Washington Post framed the choice as more children in poverty versus more seniors in poverty. The suggestion that we have become a country who's the suggestion that we have become a country where those living in poverty fight each other for a handful of crumbs tossed off the tables of the very wealthy is fundamentally wrong. This is about our values and our values tell us that we don't build a future by deciding first who among will be left to starve. So you know what I like about Elizabeth Warren? She's not a big screamer like I am. She doesn't yell and pound her fist on the table. You know, Harry Reid is soft-spoken, we make fun of him, but it's also because of what he says. But look at what she says. What she's saying is incredibly strong. She's saying, look, I'm tired of getting the crumbs off the table for the American people from the, the rich who uh, the Washington Post tell us are in it to protect the children. Now, that's interesting. Because the Washington Post editorial board didn't mention any programs they would like to increase spending on for the children. They just said, no, 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 let's cut the money from the elderly. They didn't say give it to the kids. They used the kids as an excuse, but they're actually not in favor of any money that goes to spending increases for the kids. No, they're in favor of letting the rich keep that money, okay? So she's pointing that out, but she ain't half done yet. Go. Look at the basic facts. Today's Social Security has a $2.7 trillion surplus. If we do nothing, Social Security will be safe for the next 20 years, and even after that, we'll continue to pay most benefits. With some modest adjustments, we can keep the system solvent for many more years, and we could even increase benefits. So here she is laying out the facts. She's like, I'm not going to let you lie. It doesn't have a deficit. Overall, Social Security has not just a surplus, a gigantic surplus. When's the last time you saw that in the mainstream media? $2.7 trillion surplus. That's why they're so afraid of her, because she's popular, she comes out and tells you facts, facts they don't want you to know. Not done yet. This is the part that I love, because keep in mind, people in favor of the chain CPI, which is what she's going to talk about, it's an accounting trait, they're not just Republicans. President Obama and even Nancy Pelosi have said, oh, we might want to do uh, fix the quote-unquote or switch to a change CPI. Listen how she addresses that. The most recent discussion about cutting benefits has focused on something called the change CPI. Supporters of the change CPI say it's a more accurate way of measuring the cost of living increases for seniors. This statement is simply not true. Chain CPI falls far short of the actual increases in costs that seniors face. Pure and simple. Chain CPI, it's just a fancy way to say cut benefits. The Bureau of Labor Statistics has developed a measure of the real impact of inflation on seniors. It's called the CPI-E. And if we adopt it today, it would generally increase the benefits for our retirees, not cut them. Damn, she might be soft-spoken, but she just called the president a liar. Chain CPI is what President Obama was saying. Oh, no, no, it's okay, we can do that. It's just a little adjustment. Yeah, it's an adjustment downward. That's your plan for cutting Social Security. That's what we've been saying all along. Those are facts. So the, here she is saying, and hey, they're not telling you the truth, okay? They're trying to cut your benefits that you love, and you paid into your whole life. 
okay? And the reality is we would do better if we increased your payments, and we can, by the way. All you gotta do is lift the payroll tax for Social Security, it's that simple. It doesn't do anything to our deficit. And that's why if you lift the cap from 113,000, that means the 12.4% that everybody making under 113,000 already pays would apply to everybody above $113,000 a year as well. Okay, now, now she says this, but she's throwing her lot in with the libs and the Senate and the House, these extreme liberals and progressives. Of course the country doesn't agree with her, they're center right, right? Mm, except they just did some polling. Public policy polling did it. Uh, yes, they did it for move on, but you know public policy polling was ranked the single most accurate poll in the 2012 elections in calling all the different elections, presidential, Senate, and House. And what did they come up with? Actually, they came up with numbers that are slightly disappointing to me because every other poll I've ever seen shows that Social Security has approval ratings in the mid to high 80s, and people say don't cut it under any circumstances. In this case, well, you know, sad day, the numbers came in five states that they polled, and I'll tell you why they polled in those states in a second. Arkansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, North Carolina, and Washington, and Social Security's approval rating only came in in the 70s, okay, which is obviously overwhelming nonetheless. Saying, and it's not just I approve of it, it's saying do not cut it. Do not cut Social Security above 70%. California's 52nd district randomly was the outlier. It came in at 66%. That's in the, of all the different districts they looked at, the lowest number they could find was two thirds of people saying, do not cut it under any circumstances. But that's not all. They said, again, the 70% ball ballpark on average said, if my congressman or senator goes on to vote to cut Social Security, I will vote against them, 70%. Now the reason they picked those five states is because there's nine districts in there that are uh, precarious districts, it could go either way, Democrat or Republican, and those n uh, people sit on the House and Senate Conference Committee who decides what to do with the budget, including maybe cutting Social Security. So this is a very smart poll saying, if you'd like to lose your seat, have at it, Hoss. Disagree with Elizabeth Warren, disagree with us radical liberals that are over 70% of the people in your district. Have at it and see how it turns out for you. Do it if you're a Democrat, do it if you're a Republican, see if you get reelected. But that's not all. Here's my favorite part of the poll. They ask people, would you like to increase what goes into Social Security, meaning like would you like the payments to be higher? Now that's not good, that's the outrageous liberal position, right? I mean nobody's, in Washington they don't even discuss it. The Washington Post made a mistake here by actually engaging in liberals in a debate, because normally they just ignore liberals, they don't even, how <laughs> dare you don't represent the American people. I hear all the time the politicians come on TV and tell me the American people say, the American people say. So the American people are not going to be in favor, with this deficit problem that we have, they're not going to be in favor of increasing what we pay to Social Security recipients, right? You can see where this is going. 65% of people on average in those five states said you should increase social security benefits. Two thirds of the country, when's the last time you saw two thirds of the country agree on anything? It turns out the wild radical liberal position is the overwhelmingly favorite position in this country. And you go, hey you don't think that, you, you, don't, you don't think these states are representative enough? You think North Carolina is too liberal? Have at it, Hoss. Test the whole country. I guarantee you, you're going to get similar or better results. We're not an extreme. We're smack dab in the middle of the country, what the country actually believes. That's where Elizabeth Warren is, and that's where the position that she fights from. And guess what? That's why she's popular. I know it's really hard to understand for Washington pundits.